December at this point is disrespectful in college football. Some of you may not realize what's happening. I agree it's kind of snuck up on us a little bit, and if you're a fan, once conference championship Saturday's over, maybe it is your modus operandi to just check out and I'll come back for bowl games or I'll come back for early signing day, and that's okay, that's your prerogative. Obviously, we around here, we do it every day. And if you're watching the show or listening to the show, you're probably into the sport on a day-to-day -day granular level. Have you noticed what they did to December? I very intentionally use they, because this is plural. Not just one person could screw college football's December up this thoroughly. No, it takes a committee to do it like this. Sometimes I say, if the aliens were to land here and observe fill in the blank, they would be baffled by it. That's not always a bad thing. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But forget the aliens, okay? Because then I'll just have a debate about Area 51 in the comments. If a group of people were to just arrive here, fully intelligent, but they know nothing about the specifics of America, and they observe college football stadiums, I have always argued that stadiums were built in college football over decades. So part one was built in the 20s, and then an addition was made in the 40s, and then they overhauled it again in the 70s, and most recently in the early 2000s. And if you've been to some of these stadiums, Bryant-Denny Stadium is one of them, uh, Beaver Stadium at Penn State's one of them, if you look at it from a blimp, eh, sometimes it can look okay, but if, if you get down into the, the guts of it, like we get to see, some of that place is really old, and then some of it's really new, and, and they're like 70-year differences if you go from one area to another area. But that's kind of beautiful to me. That's one of the things I love about college football stadiums. So I don't have any problem with that. But in college football's calendar, I got a big problem with it. Because if that same group of people looked at December right now in college football, they would say, what is college football? If you think about like the totality of our sport, it is games, it's conference championship games, it's it's, it's the playoff, it's recruiting, it's early signing day, it's transfer portal windows now. You've got NIL, you got coaches being fired, you got coaches being hired, you got coaches on the move. There's only one month where all of that happens at the same time, and that's December. Some of it you can control, some of it you can't. But the very design of this sport is such that we chose to put the early signing date right there smack dab in the middle of December. <clears throat> like down the road, December 21st, 10 days from now, that's early signing day. God didn't tell you to put that there. You weren't just born and all of a sudden, boom, it's there. Like Christmas is pretty fixed on December 25th. The early signing date doesn't have to be fixed. It's, it's not part of American colloquialism. We don't have to do it that way. We chose to put it there. And the problem is there, there's not like one central planner here in college football there are a whole bunch of folks with, with a whole bunch of differing views on the sport, uh, to varying degrees, different understandings of the sport. And this is, this is the best that they could do. So this is December. Like, this right here may not bother you. Like, if you're a fan, a lot of this doesn't impact you. But just imagine for a second. You're a coach. Head coach, that's great. But at least you get paid millions of dollars to deal with all this mess. Not everyone who coaches this sport gets paid millions. Not everyone's a head coach or a coordinator. Hey, some people are player personnel directors. Some people are, you know, working third or fourth rung in a recruiting department. You know what this month is like? You know what December is like right now? It's, it's brutal. So just imagine you could fill in the blank. Any one of these major programs right now, you could have all these things happening simultaneously. You could have conference championship Saturday, then maybe you make the playoff, but at the very least you make a bowl game. So you've got that going on. Several members of your coaching staff may be getting poached. So <clears throat> you've got part of your staff leaving. You then have to fill those positions. Oh, and by the way, the kids that you're trying to recruit to finish out a signing class 10 days from now, they want to know who their position coach is going to be. In some cases, the guy recruiting them is leaving, so you have to fill that spot. And in the interim, other guys have to come in and pick up their slack on the recruiting trail. You're simultaneous to that, trying to recruit your own roster to stay because the portal door is wide open over there. And so you're trying to make sure you got a good sense of which one of your kids is going in and isn't going in. 
Then also the portal door, it swings both ways over there. So you're trying to gauge the portal to see who you want to bring in. And you got to manage NIL during all of that. And as you're trying to hire new coachings or new coaches to your staff, you've got to figure out time to prepare for a game too. All that's happening. You can either take that one of two ways. You can either look at that and say, big deal. You know, that's what they get paid that money for. And as I've said a million times, and I'll say it a million and one, like Mima always told me, no amount of money puts a 25th hour in a man's day. That's math. Okay, Mima didn't need the calculator for that. She's right. There is no amount of money that makes you capable of more than you were maximum capable of. And if we look around, that's not the exception. Like the, the thing that I just described, those, those combinations of things, that's everywhere. At least at the major programs, it's happening everywhere right now. So how could you fix this? It's, it's one thing to just spout off problems, but how would you fix it? I think one of the things you could do that, that would be the first move that I would make is moving early signing day. That alone would alleviate not all of this, but a lot of this. Because if I took early signing day from where it is right now, which is just totally disrespectful, I'll tell you why I mean that in a second. If I took early signing day from December 21st and I made it July 31st, like I, I'm a believer you should have early signing day before the season. And it, it's out of the way during the season. And the next signing day is going to be the one in February. Move it to March if you want to. I don't care. But I think about the the rushed timetable of head coaching or coaching changes right now, head coach and otherwise. And it's all predicated really on two things. It's predicated on the early signing period and the transfer portal. The portal with the window time frame, I don't know that I can do a ton about uh, only because you want to position that to where if a guy's going to transfer in the early window, he can get in school before the semester starts at his next place. I get that. But with the signing day, like the signing day right now being where it is mandates that if I got a guy at Pate State that I'm going to I'm going to move on and I know I'm going to move on from him. I'm going to move early. I'm going to do what Auburn did with Brian Harson. You know, I'm going to I'm going to do what Wisconsin did with Paul Christ. I'm going to move early so that I can get a head start on getting my new guy in there. And then he can get his head start on hiring his staff. And it's just this mess all around college football. And you're trying to do all the other things that I talked about, too. There's a list, notable coaching changes on your screen if you're watching now. you got Satterfield, just one of the weirdest coaching moves in a while, by the way, going from Louisville to Cincinnati. Uh, Jeff Brom goes to Louisville. I'm not so sure they're not celebrating that at Louisville, by the way. But there's a lot of movement going on. I wonder not whether the moves would happen. I don't care about the moves happening. I wonder if I moved the early signing day, if the moves would be happening at the times they're happening, or whether if I made the move, a few more guys would finish their season and then get fired or finish their season at their current position. I don't know, but here's where the disrespect comes in. You can so blatantly tell that the people who designed college football's December calendar really aren't close to the game, because if you're close to the game, you understand how ludicrous it is to have all this happening at the same time and to have early signing day where it is most schools, most high schools now, are out for Christmas somewhere between December 15th and December 20th. Somewhere in that time frame is probably where you're letting out for what you would call Christmas break. You got the early signing day when you should be off to see Mima and Peepaw yourself. You got the early signing day falling smack dab in the middle of that. By the way, again, it wasn't, it wasn't preordained from on high. That's where it's got to be. We just chose to put it there. Why? Because these people have no concept of what it's like to be a student athlete or what it's like to be a coach and be out on the road the 20th and 21st and you're trying to lock down final visits with kids or you're trying to be in home and you're trying to make kids make the most important decision to that point in their lives, at least scholastically and professionally, air quotes, professionally, and they're supposed to be on Christmas break. So I know no one's forcing them to commit early, but that's the name of the game. Most people commit early now. I think a lot of this would be alleviated if we did nothing more than we moved the early signing day to late July. I think other moves could be made. I'm just saying if I changed one thing about that, I think a lot of that would be alleviated. Guys, thanks for watching Late Kick. Make sure to leave a comment. I love interacting with you. But most of all, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. That's how we keep all of this free.